Hello and a very warm welcome to all learners on my productive and skill oriented platform. I'm Tariq Khan, your trainer for this entire learning series, which related to most industry demanded skill cloud computing. In all episodes of this whole journey, we will learn concepts about cloud technologies and gain number of hands-on skills which make capable all our learners to join this industry and start a progressive career with the recognition they deserve. So let's begin the journey. So when I talk about my IT career, I have a number of certifications on the platform of cloud computing, which include uh, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, GCP certification, and Amazon Solution Architect. I have a number of certifications on the platform of Cisco, which are related to the networking technology, which include CCNA, CCNP, and CCI. I have a few certifications on the platform of uh, a virtualization on the, on the platform of a VMware, and number of certifications on the side of system infrastructure on the platform of Microsoft. I have done a number of projects on different platforms which include system networking, IT, uh, security and cloud computing and uh, work with a uh, number of uh, multinational organization uh, within last 10 years. So it's my uh, brief history related to my certification and career. So let's talk about the major key takeaways which we are going to cover during this whole series. <clears throat> so what are the important key takeaways? What are the objective of this uh, training series? In the first episode, we will definitely gain cloud fundamental concept. As you know, that without understanding the fundamentals of any technology, it is impossible for anyone uh, to gain knowledge and skill on any specific technology. So we will start from the definition and understand what is cloud computing and what kind of technologies, techniques and tools running behind the scene and facilitating the current IT infrastructure. After that, a uh, brief discussion of cloud architecture. You know that the architecture is the uh, basic or key component of any technology, which are, you can consider which are the building blocks of this technology. So uh, we will gain knowledge about the building blocks or what, what are the regions, what are the zones in the cloud computing technology. Uh, uh, what are the hybrid cloud, what, uh, uh, what concepts included in the public cloud, what kind of services this, uh, this technology providing uh, right now in IT world. So we will gain detailed knowledge about the cloud architecture uh, with hands-on labs. After that, we will discuss about the cloud technologies. There are number of technologies which involve uh, in, in the development of current cloud computing technology. So the major components of the cloud technology include compute, networking, uh, you can say storage, serverless computing, containerization, AI. So we will discuss timely all the concepts uh, uh, which are necessary to develop the fundamental skills for all the candidates. And at the last, definitely hands-on demos for cloud computing technology. The major, uh, the major objective behind this training is to develop hands-on skills for all our candidates. Uh, most of the time when uh, I'm trying to uh, uh, do any kind of training, my concept is 30-70. Uh, uh, 30% 30 uh, theoretical knowledge while 70% I'm totally focused on the lab side. So we will perform number of labs related to the cloud technology, how we can uh, create our uh, portal on, on the platform of uh, uh, Microsoft Azure or Amazon or Google Cloud and how can we create virtual machines, how we can develop storage accounts uh, on our portal. 
and after that we will definitely uh, do number of labs related to the security networking infrastructure containerization so uh, the whole uh, objective of this training program is to provide technical knowledge with uh, number of hands on labs for all the candidates so by time you will learn the theoretical concepts including with uh, tremendous or remarkable uh, lab scenarios which we are going to uh, deploy in our uh, whole series so in the in our whole series we will start with the scratch or we will understand the fundamentals of the cloud computing and uh, by digging uh, more or uh, by going uh, deep inside the cloud computing technology we will learn all the concepts of this technology so let's start with the first episode Welcome to all learners towards our first episode of this series in which we will get basic concepts of this technology. So let uh, get into a deep dive uh, of cloud computing key concepts and begin with the uh, concepts of cloud computing technology. So uh, cloud computing is the on demand delivery of IT resources via internet instead of uh, buying owning and maintaining physical data centers and servers you can access technology services such as computing power storage and networking on an as need basis from a cloud provider like google amazon and azure organizations of uh, you can say every type of size and industry are using the cloud for a wide variety of use cases uh, such as uh, a backup disaster recovery email solutions virtual desktop and web servers uh, you can consider healthcare companies are using a cloud to develop more personalized treatments for patients uh, if you take uh, another example from a financial uh, sector, financial services companies are using the cloud to uh, power real time, uh, you can say fraud detection and prevention by using this technology. Uh, uh, gaming industry, you can say uh, video game makers are using cloud to deliver online games to millions of players around the world. Uh, uh, cloud computing uh, gives you an instant access to a broad range of technologies so you can innovate faster and build nearly anything you can imagine from infrastructure to IoT or Internet of Things, artificial intelligence and much more. Um, in, in, in this kind of industry, you can, uh, you can deploy technology services in a matter of minutes and get from idea to implementation uh, several orders of magnitude faster than before. Important thing is that uh, you don't need to make a large upfront budget in hardware and overpay for capacity you don't utilize most of the time in the IT industry. Instead, you can get benefit from pay-as-you-go subscription from all cloud vendors like Azure, Amazon, and Google around the globe. Moreover, you can scale the resources up and down to grow and shrink capacity instantly as your business need changes. Cloud computing also make it easy to expand the new regions and deploy globally in few minutes or you can say uh, within few clicks. Putting applications in closer proximity to you can say end user reduce latency and improve their experiences. No matter your location, size or industry uh, this technology free your managing uh, free um, you can say uh, free you from uh, managing infrastructure and data centers so you can focus on what matter most to your business in any kind of industry by utilizing 
this technology so uh, when we are talking about the uh, cloud computing i hope you get the basic concept of uh, what what are the basic benefit of this technology and why we are using this technology so uh, let's get into more episodes and get more detailed uh, knowledge or information as well as with hands on labs to this technology thank you what is cloud computing just like when you shop for your own computer cloud computing lets you choose the power and features you need to run your software the difference is, with cloud computing, the PC is in a cloud provider's data center instead of physically with you. This lets you pay for only the services you use. Plus, someone else gets to manage the upkeep of the computer. Each cloud provider will have their own selection of services to choose from, but the basic services provided by all cloud providers are compute power and storage. Compute power is how much processing your computer can do. For example, when buying a home computer, you may choose a computer with 8 gigabytes of RAM and the latest processor to run the software you need today. But as the load on the computer grows, you find that it slows down. With cloud computing, you can add and remove compute power as you need it. This saves on costs, since you only pay for the resources you use. Storage is the volume of data you can store on your computer. A traditional computer has limited hard drive space. Over time, you may have to run out and buy another hard drive to store more data. With cloud computing, you can request more storage as you need it. Cloud providers manage the upkeep of the computer, so you don't have to. They will make sure that there are backups, that the operating system is up to date, as well as making sure that everything is up and running 24 hours a day. So as your business grows and your computing needs change, you can quickly bring on new computing resources in a cost-effective way. Welcome back to all professionals and learners with our new episode of cloud computing certification. Uh, in previous episode, we discussed the basic concept about what is cloud computing. And we learned that uh, cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of IT resources via internet. Generally, uh, when candidate heard about uh, cloud computing, so they are thinking that uh, there is a dramatic change uh, in the IT industry or uh, they are thinking that the existing infrastructure of IT industry is no more utilized with cloud computing. But you must have to be understand that the whole infrastructure which we are using uh, previously is, is still utilized in the cloud computing industry. So if we take the example of our existing infrastructure in which we include number of servers, rack mounted servers, and these servers are still <clears throat> utilized in the today's uh, computing world. Second thing, we are using number of uh, switches for the purpose of connectivity and same infrastructure is utilized with the cloud computing and you will be surprised that routers are also exist for the purpose of forwarding our packets towards the destination over the internet and in the same manner we are using firewalls for the purpose of security as we are using with our traditional data centers and these firewalls are still exist in the world of cloud computing for the purpose of security and for the purpose of data storage we have SAN devices for the purpose of uh, storage we are using uh, SAN infrastructure as we are using previously so the question is that what kind of change this cloud computing industry bring in the IT world. So the way of accessing all these uh, data centers or the way of accessing all these infrastructure devices are now changed. Previously, we are bounded with specific data centers which are exist in our offices. But right now, this limitation is completely absolute and we can access all the infrastructure from anywhere by utilizing internet that's why 
that's why we are using the term cloud computing you know that a cloud exists everywhere from, so from that concept uh, the industry experts uh, use this naming convention uh, of cloud computing that if you have internet so you can access your all IT infrastructure uh, from anywhere now we have number of vendors uh, like uh, you can say Microsoft and uh, we have uh, uh, Amazon, we have uh, Google, we have Rackspace. So there are a number of vendors uh, which uh, they, they develop their own data centers all around the world. So uh, after the implementation of their data centers, they just rented out their infrastructure uh, over the internet for all IT companies, for uh, uh, for all pharmaceutical uh, companies, and uh, all software houses which are right now wor are working uh, in the current IT industry. So previously we need to develop a complete data center to make our it uh, operations uh, for our office staff but right now we don't need to implement any kind of uh, you can say data centers we don't need to buy any kind of servers switches routers firewalls uh, uh, storage devices and we don't need any kind of a staff to manage all uh, uh, this this complicated infrastructure which exists in our data centers so uh, the thing is that there are a number of vendors exist they develop their own data centers in, in different regions of the world and they rented out their all resources when I talk about all resources it means that it might be hardware resources or it might be software resources so when i talk about the hardware resources uh, it means that i'm talking about the servers uh, switches routers firewalls storage all all this stuff is fall in the category of hardware and uh, when i discuss about the software which means that now operating systems are available over the cloud you can access any type of operating system from Linux platform, from Microsoft platform, or any other platform over the <coughs> cloud services. And a number of applications like voice over IP, collaboration services, database uh, applications are available on, on rental basis from number of vendors which we previously discussed. So they just rented out their hardware resources and software resources over the internet and companies are uh, now now companies are no more bounded to their own infrastructure and they just uh, they just integrated their uh, hardware resources and software resources with uh, with our web browser with our uh, with the user interface from where we can manage we can access and implement all kinds of uh, applications and all kinds of activities which we are uh, previously uh, done with our own data centers so all infrastructure is same you just need to get the basic concept uh, that uh, all the infrastructure is the same but the thing uh, which is changed uh, related to the cloud computing is that you must have to be understand it that number one thing there is uh, there are a uh, number of vendors uh, which are implementing which which develop their own data centers in different regions and now these resources are rented out uh, rented their resources and the third thing is that you just need internet to access uh, all kind of hardware and software infrastructure so the basic idea behind uh, the cloud computing it, uh, is just to uh, provide all kind of IT resources uh, over the internet so I hope that you get the basic 
idea that there is nothing special in the uh, cloud computing world uh, number of uh, uh, technologies number of tools number of applications number of operating systems and hardware resources are still same the only thing is change is you uh, the, the way of accessing all these resources so let's uh, continue further and uh, find more concepts about the cloud computing world here you can see that uh, here you can see that uh, uh, in front of you we have a microsoft data center in the region of dublin and inside these data centers we have the same infrastructure we have number of racks we have number of servers and all the infrastructure is same and microsoft integrated their all infrastructure it might be hardware it might be software with user interface and you can access these all data centers of microsoft from your web browser so here here you can see that so the infrastructure is same the buildings are same the equipment software side hardware side all the things are changed just these vendors rented out their resources uh, for the purpose of uh, utilizing all kind of it resources here here you can see if if you visit inside the building we have a number of racks and inside the racks we have here you can see <clears throat> we have number of servers over here here you can see that and inside these servers the major components are compute if i here you can see that the major component related to our data center is compute which which is the major part of the service uh, which is the major part of the servers which include your processor and important thing is uh, your RAM or you can say memory and the second component which is very important related to the data centers is called our storage and uh, we generally <clears throat> use a simple term SAN storage area networks for the purpose of enterprise uh, data centers right and the third and more important component which we are using for the purpose of connectivity is called switches routers and firewalls so uh, when we visit inside the uh, data center of any vendor it might be google it might be amazon microsoft rec space uh, alibaba cloud so inside infrastructure is uh, generally consist of a compute a storage area network uh, uh, and uh, switches routers and firewalls so uh, behind the scene the traditional infrastructure is uh, uh, running in a same manner the way of access is change so let's move further and get more ideas about the cloud computing infrastructure let me clear the whole stuff so we can move further here you can see that now the uh, the management administration implementation these all activities now will be performed by the vendors which are implementing their own data centers now uh, end user is totally <clears throat> disconnected with the with the administration of servers with the administration of a storage area networks by managing uh, any kind of networking infrastructure this whole responsibility and uh, of management administration now uh, will be on the side of vendor it might be uh, microsoft uh, or amazon or google so uh, the administration side is now completely uh, uh, goes at the uh, vendor side here you can see that now uh, what the important thing uh, that now uh, the vendors which we previously discussed they have their uh, number of resources here you can see that we have number of servers and uh, if we can generalize it we can say that we have 
hardware and inside the hardware we definitely have operating system and we have applications which we are using uh, in our uh, daily IT operations so these all hardware and software resources implemented inside the data centers and now they are shifted towards the cloud and from now from this technology here you can see that now by utilizing this cloud technology by utilizing this uh, let me highlight it for you by utilizing this cloud technology all resources are integrated with uh, with the user interface and user can easily access from their web browser and all kinds of operations all kinds of stuff is available over the browser and in the next session when we get the demo uh, the concepts will be uh, more clear related to the cloud computing so i just need to clear this stuff so we can move further so let's move further and get more detailed concepts here you can see that <clears throat> now inside the servers as as i discussed that we have a number of operating systems it might be on the platform of uh, microsoft let me uh, it might be operating systems it might be on the platform of uh, microsoft and it might be uh, client operating systems which include uh, windows uh, 8 or windows 10 or it might be server operating system 2012 2016 2019 or uh, we have open source operating systems which include linux right and uh, we have a number of applications uh, related to uh, the email infrastructure related to the collaboration related to the data analysis all kinds of uh, software resources are now available inside uh, the cloud industry and here you can see that if we visit inside the servers here you can see that we have email solutions we have all kinds of administration activities we have e-commerce solutions we have connectivity options we have data analysis and search options there are a number of applications now engaged with this cloud industry and end user is completely unaware and enjoying this industry by utilizing the current cloud computing infrastructure so by time you are realizing that we have uh, we are getting more clear concepts related to the cloud computing infrastructure here you can see that now this cloud industry have all kind of hardware and software infrastructure it might be uh, related to the uh, artificial intelligence it might be uh, about internet of things it might be a data analysis it might be cryptocurrency it might be development tools uh, integration email solutions databases administration uh, monitoring solutions security all kinds of stuff is now available on the cloud computing so i can say that right now uh, if I'm, uh, if uh, if we are uh, getting the real concept of the cloud computing, cloud computing is simply rented out services and uh, one stop shop where each and everything is available related to the hardware and software. Now, these end users by utilizing this industry. Now here you can see that all the end users are utilizing different kinds of applications, different kinds of activities. Some, uh, some of the applications, here you can see that they are utilizing e-commerce applications, they are enjoying their music, they are uh, uh, establishing any audio and video calls and they are working on some kind of documents and all these resources are available on this industry. So. Uh, 
in a nutshell if if i discuss the cloud computing concept all the traditional infrastructure is same the the way of access is uh, now changed if we talk about the cloud computing and second thing all the resources are rented out and the third thing you can access all resources by utilizing internet from anywhere and these vendors implemented their number of data centers around the world so uh, you can implement your uh, data centers on the cloud in multiple regions for the purpose of uh, redundancy or fault tolerance so behind the scene ideas are very simple related to the cloud computing so i hope that you get the basic idea in the first episode and now in this episode uh, we discuss in more detail about the cloud computing infrastructure and how end user is utilizing this infrastructure so uh, after that we will go and discuss what kind of limitations we have with the previous infrastructure and what kind of benefits right now we are getting from this cloud industry so uh, let's get into the third episode of this certification program Microsoft Azure has such an extensive array of services and features. How can you wrap your head around them all? We'll try to help you here by breaking them down into 10 main categories. Compute. These cloud services let you scale your computing capability on demand while only paying for what you use. add virtual machines as needed or scale your company's app services for web and mobile apps networking these features let you connect your cloud and on-premise infrastructure in order to bring the best possible experience to your customers vpns and load balancing are just two examples of these features storage whether it's disk file blob or archival storage these services let you scale your data and app storage needs in a secure fashion mobile with the mobile services you can build and deploy cross platform and native apps for any mobile device send notifications use xamarin to build cloud powered apps and take advantage of cognitive services to make your app smarter databases choose from a variety of proprietary and open source database engines to bring your current databases to the cloud use tools to manage your sql cosmos db mysql and other data services web These services help you build, deploy, manage and scale your web applications. Create web apps, publish APIs to your services or use Azure Maps to provide geospatial context to your data. Internet of Things. Use these features to connect, monitor and manage all of your IoT assets. Analyze the data as it arrives from sensors. and then take meaningful action with it big data when you have large volumes of data these open source cluster services will help you run analytics at a massive scale and make decisions based off of complex queries ai use your existing data to forecast future behaviors based on these ai services Use machine learning to build, train and deploy models to the cloud. DevOps. DevOps brings together people, processes and technology by automating software delivery to provide continuous value to your users. With Azure DevOps, you can create, build and release pipelines that provide continuous integration delivery and deployment for your applications these categories represent just a small fraction of what is available in azure 
Fortunately, it's easy to try out a new service, then mix and match them to get exactly what you need. And the best part is, you only pay for what you use. Welcome back to the demo episode of the Cloud Computing Certification. Previously, we discussed uh, about uh, uh, cloud computing infrastructure and what kind of stuff or what kind of equipment exists uh, inside cloud computing industry. And we get the concept uh, that there are a number of vendors uh, and they implemented a number of data centers in different regions of the world. Uh, you can consider Microsoft or Rackspace or Google or Alibaba or Amazon and a number of other vendors implemented uh, their data centers around the globe. Uh, here you can see that we have a Dublin data center of the Microsoft and inside uh, these data centers we implemented the rake and uh, all kind of stuff and uh, infrastructure uh, which require for um, uh, for data centers is implemented inside these data centers and we get the concept we uh, we get detailed information that we have compute resource here you can see that uh, we have a uh, compute resource in which we include uh, a processor and memory and the second major component of the cloud computing infrastructure is uh, uh, our you can say uh, storage and the third and more important component is networking which includes switches firewalls and routers which are running inside the data centers so let's get a, a, a bit demo about all those infrastructures so we can uh, we can uh, get more uh, clearer scope about the cloud computing infrastructure or so let uh, let me share a new screen with you so you can get a demo about the here you can see uh, let me remove this older stuff <clears throat> so i'm going to share a new screen with you and get the basic demo about the cloud computing infrastructure here we go here you can see that we have a, a, a url uh, about um, uh, microsoft azure portal and the address is portal.azure.com and i'll I just logged in by uh, using my uh, credentials and inside uh, this window you can see that we have a number of options related to the IT infrastructure. Let let to uh, go in uh, in more detail about the cloud infrastructure. Here you can see that I just click on more services and the new window will be appear in front of you here you can see that we have three major components you can easily find over here here you can see that previously three components discussed over here compute networking and storage and these three components are exist over here so it means that I can create a complete virtual machine from here. I can create my personalized or customizable virtual machine, networking options and storage account here from the portal. Definitely in coming uh, episodes, we will explore all kind of skills related to the deployment of um, uh, cloud computing. But right now we are uh, at the introductory episode that's why uh, we are just exploring the options uh, which exist inside the cloud infrastructure so previously uh, in the in the slide i discuss uh, here you can see that i discuss the three major options here you can see that three major options and these three major options can be easily verified from Azure portal. Here you can see that and if I click on the compute option, there are other options related to the 
compute resources we will definitely implement all those options in coming episodes and here you can see that virtual machine exists and in networking here you can see that we are uh, in, in the traditional infrastructure we are using our physical switches physical routers physical firewalls but here are the uh, logical uh, objects here you can see that virtual networks which which will be work as a uh, physical switches and here you can see that we have firewall manager we have firewall policies we have web application firewall policies so the concepts which we previously discussed we can uh, uh, we can uh, practically uh, utilize all those options over here from this portal and if i uh, click on the storage option here you can see that i can create a number of storage accounts uh, as per my own requirements so uh, 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 the concept which we get in the previous episode now uh, will be more clearer when we are uh, discussing about the cloud computing technology. So let's uh, get back to the PowerPoint and uh, see what we have uh, new options. So here we get the basic components now it's time to explore about the applications i i told you that we have a number of collaboration applications we have email solutions we have backups we have written uh, uh, disaster recovery solutions so uh, we can also explore in the demo all these applications which we discuss right now so let me share a screen again with you so we can explore about the applications here you can see that here 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 so there are a number of web applications here you can see that and mobile application platform is available on uh, cloud computing industry here the databases which is uh, purely utilized for e-commerce or banking sector and you can easily analyze that we have sql databases we have azure databases azure sql azure cosmos db and numerous options related to the uh, databases uh, application and here you can see that we have blockchain options uh, artificial intelligence machine learning uh, internet of things so uh, when uh, when previously we discussed about the resources, so we categorize them in two major options. Number one is called uh, hardware resources, and number two is called uh, their softwares and applications. And both resources we verify uh, here from the portal. So uh, let's uh, get explore all these options with uh, with Google and see what kind of resources available on the google platform so uh, we will uh, discuss uh, the same options in the coming episode and all these options will be explored on the platform of google so uh, let's go for the uh, next episode welcome back again to all learners the, as you know that we we get the basic concepts related to the cloud computing infrastructure now we are going to explore further more options uh, related to this technology so uh, let's uh, get an example uh, and then uh, by by considering this example we are going to implement our infrastructure on uh, cloud computing technology for example you can consider that i'm going to start a new software house uh, in my own country and uh, uh, my software house name will be you can consider uh, soft tech okay it will be my software house so uh, I need number of IT infrastructure if I want to make operational my this uh, new software house and for that purpose I need to buy a uh, number of servers a number of uh, storage devices networking devices and other equipment related to the data center uh, but I think that this this equipment and and establishing a new data center will be uh, will be very costly so I decided that to use rental services uh, which provide by cloud computing 
technology. So I have a number of vendors which I previously learned that I have uh, Microsoft, I have Amazon, I have Rakespace, Alibaba Cloud and uh, Google. And there are other vendors in, in this cloud computing industry. So I decided that I will take all kind of services from Microsoft related to uh, hardware resources or related to software or application resources. So I will take all kind of uh, uh, resources from Microsoft. It might be, um, you can say hardware, okay, or it might be operating system, or it might be applications or any other services so uh, i contact to the microsoft and uh, I, I dropped an email at uh, at sales team that i need your cloud services so they will ask a few questions uh, uh, regarding uh, regarding the deployment of cloud computing infrastructure and their first question will be in which region you want to establish or you want to start your cloud computing services so here here the story begins and and we will go further uh, to explore that uh, in in, uh, in how many regions microsoft exist and provide cloud computing services so let's move uh, further and explore about the uh, regions concept of Microsoft. Here you can see that generally uh, Azure global infrastructure shows that globally Microsoft have almost 54 regions available. It means that Microsoft available in 54 regions around the globe in which 52 regions are available and are operational while uh, in two regions Microsoft are uh, still uh, working to make their uh, data centers operational uh, for a specific infrastructure. So uh, um, uh, these, these uh, um, uh, different uh, on, on, the, on the map you can see that there are a number of areas where Microsoft uh, generally exists and, and in, in all these regions I can start my uh, cloud computing services uh, from Microsoft. So uh, here you can see that there are a number of regions here you can see that uh, West Central US US Goa, Canada East, UK, uh, West, uh, West Europe and here you can see that we have a number of regions related in, 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 in Australia. Here you can see that Australia East, Australia Southeast and we have South Asia region where um, uh, Microsoft data centers uh, exist and here you can see that UAE is also covered and a number of data centers exist in the region of China and here you can see that uh, Brazil South is also available where Microsoft data centers exist and and all these uh, data centers we can verify from the Azure portal so let's go to the Azure portal and verify all these locations from the portal so I just want to share a new screen with you so uh, you can uh, easily verify all those regions uh, from the Azure portal here you can see that I'm on the uh, Azure portal and here are a number of regions available here you can see that east us east us to uh, south central and asia pacific australia east and as we go down there are a number of regions available in microsoft uh, data centers okay so uh, whenever you decide to start your uh, cloud computing services from any other vendor it might be amazon it might be google cloud so they are operational around the globe uh, in in different regions so select your nearest region where you want to uh, start your cloud computing services so i hope you uh, i hope that you you generally get get the idea 
uh, about uh, cloud computing infrastructure uh, that um, uh, uh, the cloud computing services are available everywhere uh, internationally or globally you just need internet connection to uh, to deploy or implement all uh, these services related to the hardware infrastructure or uh, operating systems or application area so let's move uh, with the uh, with the next exploring idea related to the cloud computing welcome back again so uh, in a previous episode we decide that we will uh, we will start our cloud computing services uh, for our software house from uh, microsoft and we decide that uh, we will use Microsoft US Central uh, data center uh, for implementing uh, our infrastructure services uh, related to the cloud computing. So uh, right now in front of you here, I have a, a US uh, Central uh, data center of Microsoft uh, in the region of Dublin. So uh, I registered my organization uh, at uh, Azure portal. And right now I have this one window operation so now i'm entered into the supermarket of you can say uh, it supermarket of the it where i can buy each and everything related to it infrastructure related to the application or related to any kind of services so uh, it's a one stop shop where i can i can implement where i can utilize all kinds of infrastructure services it might be uh, related to the compute network or uh, storage i can uh, utilize artificial intelligence services i can implement internet of things i can also utilize all kinds of security services related to the infrastructure on the platform of microsoft azure and there is a uh, there is a large number of services uh, related to the cloud computing which i can implement for my own software house so let's uh, get a big picture of all kinds of services related to the cloud computing infrastructure here we go now here you can see that if i can start uh, uh, from infrastructure services so uh, there are three major categories related to the infrastructure services which include compute storage and networking in the compute resource, I can uh, deploy virtual machines. I can uh, start development with containerization. I can also implement Kubernetes related to the uh, containerization technology. And uh, there are a number of other services which also fall in the category of compute. At a second stage, I have storage uh, uh, services related to the infrastructure and there are uh, types of storage account which I can create in Azure portal according to my own software house requirement. So uh, there are types of storage accounts which we will discuss later as we go further uh, with this certification training program and at uh, at level uh, three we have networking services where we can create virtual switches where we can implement uh, dns services uh, where I, I will i will implement uh, vpn gateways and a uh, number of other uh, resources related to the security so these three major services fall in the category of infrastructure services I have also uh, uh, services related to the media and uh, CDN, which is stand for uh, content delivery network, which we generally utilize for the purpose of uh, performance enhancements when we are uh, sending data back and forth on a cloud computing infrastructure. And here you can see that I have a number of application platforms related to the web apps, mobile apps, APIs, cloud services. Services. And if I talk about uh, data services uh, related to the uh, database applications, here you can see that we have number of applications related to the data 
databases which include sql database which which include uh, azure cache for redis uh, we, we also have table storage so there are number of services also fall in the category of data and here you can see that analytics and iot so i have number of services related to the internet of things and uh, stream analytics so data like analytics services data factory uh, and power bi services available on the platform of microsoft azure and here you can see that there are number of services available related to the security and management so uh, if if we if we write down the summary related to the uh, cloud services uh, on any other platform, it might be Amazon, it might be Google, or any other cloud vendor. So these all kinds of services available uh, on uh, all other vendors as well. So uh, now we have a big picture related to the cloud services which exist globally. So on the cloud platform we are not only limited to uh, limited to the infrastructure services uh, in which uh, compute storage and networking include but we also have a number of application platforms uh, we have devops we have uh, iot we have compute resources we have security and management so by time we will definitely uh, implement uh, and start the deployment of all these services one by one so i hope that uh, you get the real concept of services related to the cloud computing infrastructure microsoft azure has such an extensive array of services and features how can you wrap your head around them all we'll try to help you here by breaking them down into 10 main categories Compute. These cloud services let you scale your computing capability on demand while only paying for what you use. Add virtual machines as needed or scale your company's app services for web and mobile apps. Networking. These features let you connect your cloud and on-premise infrastructure in order to bring the best possible experience to your customers. VPNs and load balancing are just two examples of these features. Storage Whether it's disk, file, blob or archival storage, these services let you scale your data and app storage needs in a secure fashion. Mobile with the mobile services, you can build and deploy cross-platform and native apps for any mobile device. Send notifications, use Xamarin to build cloud-powered apps and take advantage of cognitive services to make your apps smarter. Databases Choose from a variety of proprietary and open-source database engines to bring your current databases to the cloud. Use tools to manage your SQL, Cosmos DB, MySQL, and other data services. Web. These services help you build, deploy, manage, and scale your web applications. Create web apps, publish APIs to your services, or use Azure Maps to provide geospatial context to your data. Internet of Things. Use these features to connect, monitor and manage all of your IoT assets. Analyze the data as it arrives from sensors and then take meaningful action with it. Big Data When you have large volumes of data, these open source cluster services will help you run analytics at a massive scale and make decisions based off of complex queries. AI Use your existing data to forecast future behaviors based on these AI services. Use machine learning to build, train and deploy models to the cloud. DevOps DevOps brings together people, processes and technology by automating software delivery, 
to provide continuous value to your users. With Azure DevOps, you can create, build and release pipelines that provide continuous integration, delivery and deployment for your applications. These categories represent just a small fraction of what is available in Azure. Fortunately, it's easy to try out a new service, then mix and match them to get exactly what you need. And the best part is, you only pay for what you use. Welcome back again to all cloud learners with a new exciting episode of cloud computing certification. Uh, previously, we get detailed concepts about uh, cloud computing industry. Right now, we have another important concept which is known as cloud service model. So, when you decide to uh, get the rental services from a cloud computing industry, for that purpose, you can contact any cloud computing vendor. It might be Amazon, Microsoft, Google Cloud or any other vendor. When you call them, so they will reply you that, sir, we have a number of models related to the cloud computing technology. Uh, we are going to send the list of our models. Kindly select your uh, specific model according to your requirements. Uh, so uh, after that, we will definitely provide our services uh, for your software house or any other organization. So. Uh, uh, it, it might be when you are going to uh, utilize any kind of uh, rental services on cloud computing uh, industry, uh, it might be possible that you only need infrastructure services. And it might be possible that you need only hosting services or you want to uh, utilize the artificial intelligence services or you only want to enjoy DevOps development side. So it's up to you. According to your requirement, you just need to select the specific service model from any cloud vendor. So before going to understand uh, in detail uh, cloud service model, just take an example. So, for example, you are uh, going to start your own business and for that purpose, you need office space. And for this office space requirements, you call any real estate agent and you said that, uh, hello, sir, uh, I need office space near my location. Do you have any availability? So they will reply you. Yes, of course, uh, we have a number of office spaces available. Uh, uh, I, I just send you the list and options. And according to your requirement, you can select any one of them and then we will provide our services to you. So let's take the example what kind of options they have related to their own services. Here are the list of models. Here you can see that after call, a real estate agent uh, uh, send me three options. Number one option uh, is that office space with 1000 square yard uh, without any furniture, office cabinets, uh, etc. on monthly rental basis. So I reject this option because uh, I know that if I uh, if I uh, get this space, I need to uh, I need to spend money on furniture, office cabinets, and etc. Uh, in, in second option, uh, he said me that office space one thousand square yards. Okay, that's good. With all kind of furniture, that's that's a suitable option. Uh, all kinds of furniture, office cabinets, etc., on monthly rental basis. So, you know, when when I, I saw these two options, so the first option I just rejected because it will uh, it will require more money or more budget. So I select the second option. But when I read the third option, office space, 1000 square yard with all kind of furniture, mm -hmm. uh, office cabinets, that's good. Laptops, that's, that's another uh, advantage, etc. on per hour rental basis. That is the right option and more suitable option for me because I don't need to pay for a uh, monthly basis because it might be uh, I utilize my office space for only nine hours 
okay or um, uh, it might be for 12 hours so I, I i it's it's more suitable for me to pay for 12 hours rather than to pay on monthly basis an important thing laptop is already available office cabinets furniture each and everything it means that it's a well furnished office uh, ready to use available for your software house so I will select the third option because it will save my time, it will save my budget and it is more convenient for me in, in all aspects. So in the same manner, when we are going to utilize a, a cloud computing industry, this industry has also a number of models and according to our requirements, we need to select any one of them. So let's go uh, and explore options related to the cloud service. Let me remove all this stuff and uh, then we will move further. Here you can see that cloud service models. First option we have already rejected, which is known as on premises. Here you can see that I just want to highlight it for you. Mm -hmm. Here you can see that on premises. I already rejected this option because previously I discussed that I don't want to buy any kind of infrastructure devices it might be servers in infrastructure devices networking devices security devices so it's a traditional infrastructure which which i have already uh, decided that i will not go with this option now other three options available with cloud service model first model is very simple uh, it, it's called infrastructure as a service okay in 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 this model what kind of services cloud service model will provide me number one it will provide me all kind of infrastructure related to the networking that's good thing and all kind of storage infrastructure number three all kind of servers will be available for me and Fourth and most important option, virtualization is already implemented. So I can create my own virtual machines. In the first model of the uh, of, uh, cloud industry, we have all uh, infrastructure related uh, equipment uh, available, which we can utilize for implementing our own uh, operating systems, Active Directory services and any other relevant services which I want to deploy in my uh, cloud computing infrastructure. After that, after these four options, it's my responsibility to install all kinds of operating systems, any kind of uh, middleware applications, uh, might be SQL or might be e-commerce or might be uh, web hosting servers, each and everything you will, it, it's your responsibility to implement all kind of infrastructure after getting these four options uh, in cloud service model. So that kind of model in which infrastructure is available and you need to deploy operating systems, applications, runtime data and all kinds of implementation uh, will be your responsibility. That kind of infrastructure is called infrastructure as a service. So uh, uh, if, if this, this option is more suitable for you, you can utilize it, okay? The second option is called platform as a service. This, this, uh, uh, this model is more uh, beneficial than the first one. In this option, all infrastructure related uh, resources will be available, including operating system, any kind of middleware or runtime applications will be already available to you. You just need to uh, put your data on cloud for uh, for testing purpose or for any analysis or any other kind of task. So, uh, in 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 second option, uh, uh, service ready uh, infrastructure will be available for you. You don't 
uh, need to spend time on uh, installing operating systems, applications, and uh, other kind of stuff in uh, this kind of model. So uh, if, if this kind of model is uh, more suitable for you, so you can utilize a platform as a service from cloud service model. We can take the example of a uh, platform as a service. Let's see. Uh, you have uh, you have a number of um, uh, uh, SQL databases and you just want to host your uh, SQL databases on uh, cloud computing infrastructure. So for that purpose, you just need to put your SQL databases on um, uh, Microsoft Azure or Amazon or Google and all the infrastructure will be already uh, implemented over there. You just need to put your own databases over there and enjoy your uh, databases infrastructure for your own company and it might be uh, it, it is it is possible that uh, you have any uh, you develop any kind of a game and you just want to test uh, your uh, uh, gaming features so for that purpose you request to the microsoft that i need that kind of infrastructure they will provide all kind of infrastructure related resources and then install uh, all kinds of operating systems and application and you just need to test your own uh, gaming features over there so that kind of uh, model is called platform as a service Third model is also available uh, if you want to get the benefit from a cloud computing infrastructure. This model is called SaaS Software as a Service. In this kind of model, each and everything is available on the cloud. You just need to request to the Microsoft that I need this service. Uh, I need this software, this specific software will be provided to you and you, uh, uh, you will be totally uh, utilizing the specific application or specific software and it will, uh, 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 it will be the responsibility of the Microsoft that manage all kind of hardware resources, operating system, application, each and everything will be the responsibility of the Microsoft. You you are the end user and just uh, utilizing the cloud services and uh, enjoying the benefits of this industry and if you want to take the example of a software as a service so sky for business is the best example for software as a service you just call to the microsoft and said that hey i need uh, a, a communication application or which installed on my laptops and uh, my uh, my employees or my colleagues uh, cell phones so they can coordinate communicate and conduct a number of meetings uh, for their business purposes so microsoft will uh, allow you uh, to register yourself for uh, on on sky for business and after uh, your organization registration you can utilize sky for business for all kinds of communication the second example related to the software as a service is office 365 you don't want to install any kind of office applications on your laptops or your or on your desktop machines or mobile phones office 365 is available online on their web portal so you can utilize all kinds of office applications uh, from office 365 so uh, these three models available on all uh, cloud vendors uh, you can uh, you can avail these uh, three uh, service uh, models uh, from amazon for, from google cloud from azure from um, uh, rack space or any other vendor so it's up to you now uh, when you understand infrastructure as a service platform as a service and software as a service. So being as a cloud professional, now it's your responsibility what kind of infrastructure you are going to propose for your client, or for your customer or for your own business. So I hope that you get the basic concepts in detail about cloud service models. So let's go for further episodes and learn more uh, technical skills and hands-on labs related to the cloud computing industry.
welcome back again with a new episode and in this episode we will go and create a free azure portal account to explore cloud computing features related to microsoft azure so let's begin this episode i just type create free azure account here you can see that i just click on the azure official site And as I continue, you will find uh, two options here. You can see that start free or buy now. So you just click on the start free button <clears throat> and process will be initiated. Here you can see that I'm using teach on udemy at gmail.com as in my email address. So you, you can also contact us via uh, this email address if you have any uh, queries or if you want to or give us any kind of feedback related to our training program so here I have selected my region now I type my first name and uh, then last name my email address and my cell number here you can see that and click on the next button and now I select the text me so it will send a code on my cell number and I can proceed further when this procedure is completed then you will uh, you will get two hundred dollars uh, amount from a Microsoft uh, where you can uh, perform number of activities on Azure portal so I get code on my uh, cell number I just want to type this code eight double nine three eight two I will verify the code and then follow the simple options uh, by which I can create this account and all these steps are uploaded uh, in a document uh, with this training you can download that specific document and create your own Azure portal account and proceed by exploring further features related to the Microsoft cloud computing technology okay here you can uh, put your visa card information and uh, all relevant information for creating your own account and when uh, you are done with all activities related to the microsoft azure portal you can also deactivate this account uh, before one month okay so let's uh, let's begin uh, with with further exploring features related to uh, related to the cloud computing technology taking advantage of the wide array of Azure services, you'll need to first sign up for an account. If you are completely new to using Azure, you can begin exploring what Azure has to offer by signing up for an Azure free account. An Azure free account includes access to 20 Azure products, free for 12 months, access to additional products that are always free, and $200 credit to spend during your first 30 days. For more information on signing up for an Azure free account, head here. If you work for a large organization, you may be able to purchase access through a Microsoft representative or through a Microsoft partner. Finally, you can purchase access directly through Azure.com. With pay-as-you-go pricing, you pay only for what you use each month, with no upfront commitment and you can cancel at any time. Once you have an active Azure account, you may want to create additional subscriptions for resource or billing management purposes. If you have multiple subscriptions, you can organize them into invoice sections. Each invoice section is a line item on the invoice that shows the charges incurred that month. You can also set up multiple invoices within the same billing account by using billing profiles. Each billing profile has its own monthly invoice and payment method. Once your account is active and billing is set up, you're ready to start using Azure. As a part of your subscription, you have 24-7 access to online documentation, community support and new Azure capabilities demo videos created by Azure engineers. For more information on the support resources available to you, head here. <laughs> 